Hi guys and welcome to my fourth 100 how to blender videos. In this one I'm just going to demonstrate how to model a tennis ball. It's just about modeling techniques and different ways you can model something to achieve specific results. There are some videos out there regarding how to model a tennis ball but I thought I would just repeat them and maybe add just a little extra more a little bit more information into the video. So the first thing we're going to do is simply go to add mesh, add mesh and UV sphere. We're going to look at the sphere front view and just to give it an extra level of a better visualization process, I'm going to change the view from perspective to ortho. So we're looking, actually it was already on ortho, I'm going to change it to ortho now. So we're looking directly straight on to the sphere. I'll be going into edit mode and by pressing Z on the keyboard I can see through the sphere. I'm now going to press A which deselects all the vertices on the sphere and I will be pressing B which is a type of selection tool on Blender you can see that when I move the cursor I'm able to now um, left hand mouse click keep my finger down on the left hand button and basically drag a box and as soon as I let go of my left hand mouse button it selects the area that I've highlighted with the box and I'm just gonna just go around it to see that I've selected exactly half of the sphere don't worry about this other sphere that you're seeing passing by this I'm going to use as a uh, for demonstration purposes a bit later on so it's exactly half the sphere so I'm going to go back to front view hit X on the keyboard and that's for X for delete and select faces so I've now deleted half of the sphere I'm gonna press Z again to take me back to solid mode and go to object mode here. Now what I want to do is duplicate this half by pressing Ctrl and D for duplicate. Sorry, Shift and D for duplicate. So it's Shift, keep your finger down on the Shift button and D for duplicate. So you see when I move the mouse I've created a, a duplicate of the sphere. If I hit exit it looks like I've only got one half sphere but in fact there's two of them one on top of each other so one of them is actually selected now so I'm going to rotate it so by pressing R on the keyboard for rotate which I want to rotate along the z-axis you can see the line as I move the mouse you can see that it's trying to rotate along the z-axis so I'm going to start that process again just to make it a bit less confusing. Um, R for rotate on the keyboard along the z-axis so you press Z and I want to rotate it 180 degrees so I type in 180 on the keyboard and then I hit enter to set it in place. Now what I'm going to do is you might think well that's a back to a full sphere but the reason we did this is because that's half that's already selected you can see it's selected from the um, orange outline. If I press R for rotate again and this time rotate along the x-axis you can see that when I type in 90, 90, I've rotated it 90 degrees along the x-axis and hit enter. The reason we've done this is because a tennis ball has a distinctive white seam that goes around it. Now if you look at the pattern of the ball now you've got that shape of the seam and that's the reason why we've just taken all those steps that we just have. So the left hand sphere, half of the sphere is selected. If you keep your finger down on the shift button and then right hand click on the right hand sphere, you can see they're both now selected. And by pressing control, keeping your finger down on control, and J on the keyboard, J for join, 
we have joined the ball into one mesh. So it's going from two parts to one part. Now the issue here is if I go zoom out just a little bit and I come to this ball here what we've done is we've basically joined one half to another half. So by going into edit mode you can see that the seams here, sorry, the vertices here along this corner will actually join with these vertices here along the edge here. So you're basically going to have, in this case, this vertices here. Is going to overlap with this vertices here. It's not a good idea to overlap vertices when you come to modeling. And if I come back to the ball here, I'll show you exactly what has happened. So this is the ball that we've just joined together. So if I go to object mode, right hand click on the ball to select it, then go to edit mode and go to the area where the seams have joined. If I move this vertex, you can see the other vertex from the other half of the ball. This is an issue. You don't want that to happen. Luckily, Blender has a nice tool that can actually eliminate those overlapping vertices. So in edit mode, press A to select the whole mesh. A is for deselecting it and A is also for selecting it. So press A until you've got it all highlighted in orange. Now we go here to the left hand side, remove doubles. So if I come back to the ball and I move the seam, uh, the vertex, sorry, yeah the vertex, you can see there's only one, so they're no longer overlapping. So that's exactly what we wanted. And let's go back to object mode here. The next step here is to create that white seam that goes around the, go uh, the tennis ball. So we go into edit mode and there's this tool here that is called, let me just try to find it here, loop cut and slide. Hit that and then move your mouse over the model and you want to get it so it's going around the ball like so. So you left hand click and then you can move it like so. So I want it to go to about there and you can see that it's highlighted all the way around the ball and I can't remember what it's like on Windows. I'm using Linux operating system here but on the Linux operating system if you press shift keep your finger down on shift and then press alt whilst keeping your finger down on both keyboards then right hand click here it will highlight and follow the path so let me do that again shift keep your finger down then alt keep your finger down on both the keys and then select around about there it will highlight the whole path of vertices and then I'm going to do it again, shift and alt, keep my finger down on both, the next one, and we highlight that area. Now I'm going to press E for extrude, so if I move it you can see it's extruding it, but it's not extruding it in the direction that I want to extrude it. So after pressing E, press escape, and then press S for scale, and then I can just scale it downwards to about there. Go into object mode, then go to object modifier, add modifier, and hit sub division surface. This actually makes it smoother. And I can increase that view to 2 and just give it an extra bit of smoothness by going to shading smooth. Try not to increase this view to more than three or four because it'll really start to slow down your computer. Obviously it depends on the performance of your PC or laptop. So now we've got the general ball. 
if I now go to add um, uh, materials, add a new one, and let's just make the color an orange color. That's great. The tennis ball is yellow, but we want the seam to be white. To do this, we go into edit mode. We've got the seam already highlighted. If it's not highlighted, you're going to have to physically highlight it. I'll show you how to do that again. Go to keep your finger down on shift, then keep your finger down on alt, and then select the, vert, uh, the line of vertices. Let me press Z to make it see through so you can see it. So you can see it's all highlighted. I'll press that again. Now I want to do the same on the other side. Shift and Alt. And there you go, it highlights the whole area. So we want to add a new material by pressing this plus button here. Click New. And let's make it even whiter. And then you have to remember to assign it. And there you go. You basically created your tennis ball with the white seam. Now to make these balls even more realistic in terms of rendering, you're gonna have to use some uh, one uses tab here. That's a particle tab. And it's gonna, you know, tennis balls that fluffy, hairy type material. And to do that, you go to the particle tab, press plus to add one and instead of emitter go to hair and you'll see this hair appearing right it's quite long at the moment but uh, you can change that hair length by dropping it down using the plus uh, the arrow buttons left or right and at the moment there's only 1000 hairs so that's why it looks to be rather limiting in terms of the number of hair. You can increase those numbers by using this tab here, by physically clicking round about the middle of this section here, and then typing the number of hairs you want. I would recommend about, instead of a thousand, maybe 5,000 or 10,000. The problem is my, my system is a bit slow and it will really, it'll probably take about 10 minutes before it calculates all that. So I can't really physically show it in this video. And you can just mess around with more of these settings here to create a more fluffy looking tennis ball. I mean, I could render this right now. It's not going to look great because of the lack of hair. But you can see there are hairs appearing. And as I say, you can increase, you can probably decrease the hair a little bit more here. And increase, decrease the length of the hair and increase the number of hairs and mess around with the settings to make it a little bit more curly and more fluffy so to speak. Uh, I believe you can do that from the hair dynamics here by the stiffness, the blend, the, ma uh, the mass, the spring and so forth. So I hope, I hope this uh, tutorial has come in handy and um, I look forward to doing my next one. Thanks very much for your time guys.